Welcome to part two of Horror Needs a Hero. I'm Drum Dums, and I'm going to be your host for the second half of this extravaganza. First of all, I would like to thank CP from Will I Like It Reviews. Man, you are awesome. CP actually invited me to do this horror little mini documentary with him because he looked at some of my videos and he noticed that I am a huge horror buff. And so he thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool if I got with uh, one of my movie review buddies who loves horror like I do and maybe we could put out a little mini doc and so I love this idea too of talking about slasher icons uh, my favorite genre in horror is the slasher genre for me this was a no-brainer I, I was like hell yeah I'll jump all over this I can't wait to talk about slashers so as you know CP just provided you with this huge in-depth analysis from the dawn of horror with Frankenstein and he took you all the way up to screen so now my job is to take you from scream all the way to now maybe we can dig deep and try to dissect what is going on with the slasher genre why it kind of comes in and comes out and still there's really no huge horror icons since Freddie Michael and Jason before I get started I want to talk about this book right here if you love the slasher genre then you definitely have to check out J.A. Kurzweil's The Slasher Movie Book. It covers all the slasher movies as far back as, I believe, Peeping Tom in 1960, and it goes all the way to the Millennium Slashers. As you can see, they have a full section on Halloween. They devote like four or five pages just to Halloween. And then they talk about probably a hundred obscure slasher movies that I guarantee you've never even heard of. And as you can tell, there are tons of great pictures and illustrations. It's definitely a page turner, especially if you love the slasher genre. So definitely check out this book, the slasher movie book. Okay, little sidebar. I could not get into this without jumping back and talking about Freddie, Michael, and Jason. I want to tell you why I think they are the quintessential slasher icons of the modern age and why we haven't been able to capture that since. As you all know, I am a massive Halloween fan, and I think there's a great reason why Michael Myers, or many great reasons why Michael Myers is one of those three. I remember in one of the documentaries, they talk about how Tommy Lee Wallace, uh, at the time he was a production designer, he was assigned to go out and find a mask. They didn't know what kind of mask they were gonna use. The movie was shot in April, I believe, so there were no Halloween masks out. So the only masks he found were a William Shatner mask and a clown mask. And so he goes into this room and he tries on the clown mask first, he comes out, and they're like, yeah, that's kind of creepy. Yeah, we, we might be able to go with that. Everybody hates clowns. But then he comes out with this. We all know he comes out with the iconic William Shatner mask, but he had teased up the hair and he spray painted the face. From the words of Tommy Lee Wallace, a chill went down everybody's spine when they saw that mask. And from that second, they knew this guy was going to be an icon. When you have a mask like that, that can automatically cause a reaction of fear, then you know you're onto something. And I don't think we've been able to capture that with a lot of the Millennium Slashers. Even Scream, the mask itself is not really scary at all. And I'll talk about Scream in a minute and why that worked. Moving on to Jason. Uh, Jason, he dons the hockey mask in part three. And is the hockey mask scary? No, not really. But the big thing about Jason is the character himself, he is an anti-hero. If there was ever a great anti-hero for slashers, it's Jason because we can all sympathize for him. He was a kid that was neglected. And if you really think about it, all his victims are people that he envies or even some of us might envy. You know, it's usually the, the, the jock or the really pretty girl that's probably the cheerleader. And everybody can relate to that. I think that immediately caught on with people and he looks really freaking cool. And finally, Freddy. Freddy is a direct personification of our nightmares. And who can't relate to the boogeyman in your nightmares? That's, that's the time when you see the boogeyman. So Wes Craven really captured a moment there that everybody can relate to. And Freddy is just such a cool looking horror icon. He's got gloves with the knives, uh, his face is all burnt up, sweater is iconic. I mean, everything about him is well thought out and that's why he is an icon. So now we're going to talk about Scream. Why was Scream such a big hit? I believe Scream was lightning in a bottle. It was a conglomeration of four or five different things that all met up perfectly. First of all, the timing. 
slasher films were all but dead before Scream came out. Drew Barrymore, of all people, when she got the script for Scream, she thought this genre has been out for quite a while and I think it's going to make a comeback. So she jumped all over that and I think she was totally right. The slasher genre was ripe for an awakening. And next you got the story. The story was so well done. It was really hip and creative and it had a really, really great surprise ending. I mean, Scream was a lot of fun. It's probably one of the best modern slashers ever or post 80s slashers ever. So to this day, I can watch that first Scream movie and just have a blast. And also Scream paid homage to the horror icons before. This movie made reference to every cool horror movie. So all the older horror fans loved it. They could relate to it. And then it was also new and fresh. It had this new hip audience. All the newer horror fans, they ate it right up. Now the problem with Scream though is history repeated itself. You had quite a few new slasher movies or knockoff slasher movies that wanted to capitalize on that success, much like what happened after Halloween came out. After Halloween came out, I believe there were around 80 slashers that tried to capitalize off the genre, and no holiday was safe. You had movies uh, based on New Year's, you had movies based on Valentine's Day. Some of the more popular slasher films that came out after Scream were I Know What You Did Last Summer, and Urban Legend, and both those movies had sequels of their own. So when we're talking about icons, I think one of the reasons those movies have been all but forgotten is because the actual slasher in those movies isn't really memorable. I mean, you take, I know what you did last summer, it's a guy with a hook, but you don't see his face. He's just got a hoodie on. And the killer in Urban Legend looks pretty similar. Some other little slashers that came out after were uh, 2002's Valentine, where you had a guy that had a Cupid mask on. But again, it's a Cupid mask. It's not scary at all. I actually enjoyed that movie, but I can see why it doesn't have an iconic status. And a lot of these movies fail, and as a result, they don't get a sequel. And as you know, all the famous horror icons, they all get sequels. So as a result of all these failed post-Scream slasher movies, then we had Slasher Fatigue. And because of Slasher Fatigue, I believe a new subset of horror started coming into play. You had quite a few different genres that were actually pretty popular. And the market actually got pretty saturated. You had zombie films, ghost stories, torture porn, found footage, and even vampire horror. And this was all in the span of a decade. Okay, now getting back on topic, talking about slashers, I believe one reason why the slasher movies have kind of taken a downfall is because of all the damn remakes. They are remaking everything now. Even the old bad slasher movies, they're remaking. Just to name a few, we've had remakes of Halloween, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, House on Sorority Row, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, My Bloody Valentine. I could go on and on. Most of them are bad. They're not good remakes. I think writers need to get back to the drawing board, come up with some really creative and original horror icons. Why hasn't this happened yet? I don't understand it. Now, does that mean there aren't some good original slashers out there? No, there are definitely some good ones. Uh, I'm gonna name off a few of them for you. Your Next. Your Next is a really cool and inventive slasher movie and the killers all wear these animal masks. And again, I think the reason it's not iconic, at least not at this point, is because, yeah, they can be kind of creepy, but if you watch the movie, the actual heroine takes center stage, and she is pretty much the female version of Rambo, and she outshines the, the slashers. And that's what made that movie so good. They took a slasher movie, and they took a different aspect of it, and shined a light on it, and made a great film. Also, I think a really underrated slasher movie is The Strangers. You actually had some creepy looking slashers in this movie. They were the threat, the center point of this movie. And every time you heard a loud knock, it was so unsettling. I remember watching The Strangers with my wife. She let out the loudest scream <laughs> during one of the scenes. And my kids heard it from the other side of the house and they just busted out laughing. And that's a movie that I think they could actually do a sequel to and it could be really good. And then finally, earlier this year, the movie It Follows came out, and that is one of my favorite movies this year so far. It is so great. Just the concept of it, having sex, can cause it to come after you. It is such an enigma in this movie, and so interesting, and the way that movie is directed. Go check out my review for It Follows. 
you, you'll see what I'm talking about. I was just, I fell in love with this movie, and I almost don't want them to do a sequel to it because it's just perfect. It's so good. Unless David Robert Mitchell directs the sequel. Oh, and before I go, I forgot to mention Sam, this guy from Trick or Treat. I really think that Sam is probably the closest thing we have to a new horror icon. I know that they're actually doing a sequel to Trick or Treat, and I'm hoping they're still doing it. I can't wait. But this is such a cool character, and I love Sam. So, yeah, I just had to say that. So guys, and lastly, we have what I call the return of the icons. Jason and Michael are returning to the big screen in 2016, hopefully. I actually have news updates for both movies, so you can go and check those out. But uh, just to give you the quick gist, Halloween Returns is definitely going to be a sequel in the original timeline, and it's going to take place after the original Halloween 2. And what it looks like is that it's going to take place in the 90s which could be really interesting. And then the new Friday the 13th movie that's rumored to come out later next year. There's still not that much information on this movie. All I know is that they're definitely making it. I know originally they were talking about making a found footage Friday the 13th movie and the internet fans just went freaking berserk. The last I heard is they're definitely not doing that. They also talked about doing a Friday the 13th movie in the snow. Don't really know if that's happening now, but I'm really looking forward to it. So anyway, guys, we did it. That is it. That is the end of Horror Needs a Hero. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed talking about it. Looking forward to getting into the comments on this video. I want you guys to go down there and get a conversation going with us and tell us what you think is the reason why there aren't any modern horror icons. But anyway, guys, thank you so much, CP, for letting me be on this video. Please subscribe to him. He is awesome. And I'm hoping to do more videos with him down the line. And just thank you for supporting us. So guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And Rum Dumb out.